broadcasting live from Houston, from the space city to the world, you are watching Now Media Television. Good day and welcome back. I'm Michelle Briggs, your personal real estate host. If this is your first time with us, thank you for being here. And each week on this show, we will be exploring various aspects of real estate and how they impact or support buyers, sellers, and investors alike. So let's get started. From week to week, I feel like we continue to be all over the place within the real estate market today. It's being called a roller coaster ride. Showings were up in January, giving everyone little hope for the spring season. Now we're reading seeing active inventory is up from spring last year. However, we have sellers that are deciding to wait or renovating and remodeling. And though home listings are up, they are now down again year over year by 20% per CNBC's article March 30th. Now per the real, excuse me, the National Association of Realtors article March 29th, the key highlights are pending home sales rose for the third consecutive month. Month over month contract signings have increased in three regions, U.S. regions, but declined in the West. And pending home sales decreased in all four regions compared to a year ago. Locally here in Houston, the Houston Association of Realtors just released the fresh report, year over year reporting, and stated new listings, active listings, and average list price are up across the board. I mean, per the fresh, fresh report, active listings are up 135.6%. It's a daily challenge. I mean, to answer, how's the real estate market going? It's all over the place. Some loan officers and realtors are shying away from saying anything because it'll change next week. So real estate is still, in my opinion, a great investment. And many will agree with me, even today. Is it perfect timing? Maybe, maybe not. No matter what the market is doing, people are buying and selling every day in this country. Think about it. When you're buying a home, you look at the tax benefits, you're building equity, stability for your family, and possibly most likely appreciation and value. I mean, even investors, you're building your portfolios. You too have many pros when investing with rental properties. I mean, with the possible long-term appreciation, leverage returns on your investment, I mean, someone else is making your mortgage payment for you. I mean, I get there, there are cons to owning rental properties. However, for investors and homeowners, it's a long-term game. We are not talking flips today, but still in today's market, selling or buying is a great option for you, your family, and the investor's portfolio. Know your options and your opportunities. Okay, today, our guest is Liz Perez. She's a loan officer with CMG Home Loans. Buyers are out there, and we want to provide them options. We'll be speaking with Shona Bascone. She's a franchise owner of Gotcha Covered Galleria to talk about ways to improve your home's windows co window coverings and what's trending in 2023. Like Windows are important, right? They're important for the home. Also, Cody Lehman, he's the chief sales officer with Max Protection. So he's security systems. I mean, security systems are always highly recommended when and having a company that listens, like really listens, makes a difference for you and your future, like uh, for the home. All right, and for our investors or future investors, y Yvonne Fadi, she's a franchise owner with iTrip. She'll be teaching us or we'll be learning more about short-term rental property management and so much more. We'll be right back after these commercial break. Welcome back everyone. My name is Michelle Briggs. I'm your host for Your Personal Real Estate and we are here with Liz Perez. She is a loan officer with CMG Home Loans. How are you doing today, Liz? Hey, Michelle. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm so glad that you are here. Now, I really tell everyone about you and about what makes CMG different from other mortgage companies. Absolutely. Um, so to start off, CMG uh, Home Loans, they've been around since the early 90s and as you know, uh, through the 2008 market, a lot of mortgage banks really went under and CMG held strong through it all. Uh, they really learned to adapt and be extremely innovative with their products that they come out. Um, they are, we are a top, uh, top five mortgage lender in the nation 
and uh, we really have learned to adapt in tough markets, especially going through COVID. Everything was really good, right? And then back in 2022, the markets kind of went crazy and a lot of banks were suffering as well. However, CMG has overcame that like they have through all their other markets in the 90s, the 2008s and all of that. So um, CMG really does work on their community and what the needs of the community are going to be. And they push products out to really uh, enhance and help borrowers into more affordable homes. Now myself, I've been in the financial industry for a little over uh, 15 years and I've been doing mortgages now for about three years and it is a passion of mine. I love putting people into homes and it's, it's so rewarding, you know, when you've helped someone uh, with such a large goal that they've set for themselves in life. Well, I love that. And, you know, Liz and I, we work together and you, you and I have completed a transaction together and, and we are referral partners in, in this business in this crazy time. And what, what is one of the programs that CMG has that is adapting to the home, you know, to the market today with home buyers? Well, there's actually two uh, really great programs that CMG just rolled out uh, recently. One being our FHA Buyer's Choice, which is our down payment assistance. And with the market going on today and the economy, a lot of people just don't have that upfront cost to be able to put towards, you know, uh, a down payment. And a lot of the down payment assistance programs have a cap on your income. Well, the FHA Buyer's Choice does not have that cap. And so there's two options for you. They're really amazing. Um, and the, the interest rates aren't too bad either. Now the other uh, program that's really awesome that we started offering, it actually helps the buyers and the sellers um, kind of collaborate together to get the house sold. Um, and that's gonna be our list and lock program where the seller can actually uh, pay the buy down rate and lock it in for a potential buyer coming in to, to look at their home. Okay, so we are definitely gonna have to learn a little bit more about that for sure, some details on that, because we, we are, we're not looking at the you know, 2008 days, you know, way back when you, know, mm -hmm. you can get a loan if you breathed. However, it is a time where we are being more creative or we're finding more creativity yes. that is still honoring that, you know, the DTIs and things of that nature, the qualifications mm -hmm. to have a solid purchase because sustainability is so important. So, you know, of course we talk about we talk about interest rates, but we really don't talk about interest rates. But what are you seeing right now regarding interest rate? Don't be specific. <laughs> Any news or updates for those that are looking to apply for a loan that should be aware of today? Well, interest rates, as you know, they're not 2021 and they're not 2015. So a lot of times people don't understand that interest rates are market driven rates um, and they cost money. And so when the economy isn't doing so hot, those interest rates go up. And so right now with the economy and the way it's going, we've seen the interest rates spike. However, they're not too far off from the national average. Um, and I think that the, you know, the population had got a little comfortable with the low threes and the twos. And now we're trying to get them back comfortable with the more normal rate, which is in the four and a half to five and a half, six percent range. We're still slightly above that, but they are starting to, what I like to refer to as melting down. So, you know, as, as ice melts, you have the little drip, drip, drip. That's basically what interest rates are starting to do. They are starting to come down and balance out a lot more. Well, it's, it's, I like that analogy about the dripping and how the slowly ice melts. <laughs> uh, so it's a really good analogy and we've, we've you know, heard some numbers and being where we are today and, and what it potentially is going to be by Q4 this year mm -hmm. um, is exciting and it is normalizing. It is normalizing our interest rates right now. We are spoiled. Yes. So you're talking about the different programs. So what steps would, would a, a buyer, like what steps do buyers use or determine or how bar determines which program is the right, right one for them? If I can get that out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So just as with any other um, loan, you have to be pre-approved on your income, um, income and your debts, right? Your debt to income ratio. So a lot of what um, is part of the pre-approval process is we need to verify your income and we need to verify your credit history, your credit worthiness, 
um, and how much debt do you have in order to determine if you can afford the house that you want or the house that you maybe need or can't afford to get into. So really we look for your income documentation, whether it's W-2, 1099, tax returns, bank statements, um, things of that nature, because we really do, we have to, to make sure that we have all your income calculated properly before we issue that pre-approval, because we don't wanna issue you um, an incorrect pre-approval and then you're shopping around and you find the house of your dreams and then come to find out it's you really don't qualify for it. You know, it's amazing that you say that because it happens. I mean, mm -hmm. I, and this personally happened to me. Um, and I just, you know, it was a neighbor and she wanted to see this particular house and I said, sure, and she loved it and went to get a pre-approval and she did not qualify for it. So it was heartbreaking yeah. to watch. So it was a lesson definitely learned, even mm -hmm. with a neighbor, that will not happen again. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. So it's so true, thank you for pointing that out. We wanna make sure, again, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I spoke earlier in the intro about, in the, in the beginning of the show, about how having that realtor that's right for you. And if you get a pre-approval letter that is a $500,000 pre-approval letter and you're a first time home buyer, you know, look at something that's around 425, 400, 425 is your first time home purchase, right? Sustainability is key. So it's really mm -hmm. important for that. Okay, so what is the normal processing time for pre-approvals? I know you have where they can apply online, right? And everything goes through that. What's the normal pre-approval and, and loans with CMG and how long do the pre-approvals last? Absolutely. So pre-approvals from when the consumer puts in an application typically takes me 24 to 48 hours to turn around a pre-approval. Now pre-approvals are good uh, up to four months, which is the, the uh, before we'll have to repull your credit again. So about 180 days. And um, typically once we come into contract and you go shopping and you get to do all the fun stuff with your realtor, <laughs> then um, you come back to me with the contract and we go through the process. Now CMG has, I've done a loan in two weeks. I, I've pushed out a loan in two weeks. It just all depends. The, the biggest hang up typically is going to be your, um, your appraisal. Takes typically the longest. Um, in and out of underwriting, the first round is typically 24 to 48 hours for CMG. Well, I know again with the you know your, your forward technology or you know when you're looking at the technology that CMG has and, and having access online, it just makes things easier. So when mm -hmm. you're applying for a loan, um, I know that's not new and it's not different. However, knowing that you are a cell phone call away or a text <laughs> away makes a difference. So again, yep. everyone, if you're looking for a loan, consider CMG. Take a look at Liz. Look at her website because she literally is a phone call away and she will be at your closing. So with, yes. we are ending our segment with you, Liz. I'm so sorry. There's so much more that we could talk about. I mean, even the, the seller buy down, what, we've got to talk more about that. <laughs> so how does everyone get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can reach me. The easiest way to reach me is shoot me a text or give me a call uh, on my cell phone at uh, 832-239-2313 or shoot me an email at lizp at cmgfi.com. Thank you so much. We appreciate you Thank being you, Michelle. here today. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back everyone, Michelle Briggs here, your host for Your Personal Real Estate. We are continuing the show today with Shona Basco and she is the franchise owner of Gotcha Covered Galleria Uptown. And how are you doing today, Shona? Doing great, thank you for having me, Michelle. I love times with you, they're always so much fun. I, I, I enjoy you as well and thank you for being a part of us today. So, tell us about you and your business. Well, Gotcha Covered is a local family-owned business. My husband and I own it together, and we are a custom window treatment company. So we help homeowners and businesses come up with the right window treatment for them. So whether it's blind, shade, shutters, drapery, outdoor rollers, we help you find something that's beautiful, fits your style, and is also functional for how you use your home or your business. Now, how long have you been in this business? Gosh, it's going on five years coming up on five years. I love it. Yeah. Now, family yeah. owned, operated, this franchise, mm -hmm. Galleria Uptown. Now with the area, what when you're working with homeowners or individuals uh -huh. that are looking to improve their window coverings, I mean, what are a couple of questions that you hear consistently in, in, in the business and how, yeah. do you, how do you assist them with the concerns or misconceptions? So the biggest question I get all the time is, how much does it cost for a standard window? So there are no standard windows. 
uh, in Houston. Uh, everybody thinks they have a standard window, but they're all different sizes. And so what I tell them is I can't tell you individually because it depends on the fabric you pick, the manufacturer, if you pick motorization or cordless, so all those things come into the, the uh, pricing method. But what I tell them is take the value of your home and do 2% and 4% of that value. And that will give you a range of what you should expect to, to spend on custom window treatments. Because we're consultants, we're gonna help you go through and weed through all the different things there are that you have to consider and think about to come up with the perfect solution for you and your home or your business. So when you go out, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm adding this into our conversation, because what does it look like? So you bring, you, I mean, you have different items and actual touch feel products, and you can show them you know how it works tell us a little bit about those yeah so we bring everything to your home we set up an appointment for you for a complimentary consultation and it's really important to see it in your home with your furnishings your paint and what you have outdoors as well so because things change color in different lighting so if you look at it in one house with one paint color it's going to look different in your house with different paint coloring so it's really good to go out to the home if we can and hold everything up to the window, show you the different fabrics, uh, because fabrics will look different depending on how much light is coming in as well from the outdoors. So that's what we do. We go out, we do the consultation, and uh, I talk to you beforehand, kind of help narrow some things down, kind of get a feel for your style, and, and then that can make the, um, the session go much more efficiently if we can talk in advance. You know, I love when I was looking at your website, mm -hmm. you have an area that says that is get inspired. Can you tell us about that? I mean, we all love being inspired, right? <laughs> yes. So what is that yes, about? Yes, it it's a fun thing that we have. It's a web-based program and it has pictures of all kinds of different room settings with different window treatments in them. And you can even kind of see what type of window treatments are in there, it'll tell you. So I send you the link when we set up our complimentary consultation and then you go in and you like your favorite shade or room. And then that gives me an idea of your style. And also I can then, when we're out there at your home or your business, ask some more questions. How are you gonna use the room? You know, what's the problem in this room? Is it glare? Is it heat? Is it privacy? And then I can connect that with what you've been looking at and what you like. And then I can say, mm, okay, this one's gonna work for this. Or you know, that window treatment that you liked is not the best solution for this window or this room. And I can help you pick out the best solution that fits your style and your likes. Right, because you know, as you're mentioning about lighting, you know, when you you have a room that's facing west, right? Just mm -hmm. getting the sun east west. Mm -hmm. In determining, is there what shades do you have, or what co window coverings do you have that help with that and and keep that heat out? Yeah, the best one right now, or the best one anytime, is our honeycombs. So they are specifically made. They were made the, created in the 70s during the energy crisis to cut down on the heat transfer from the outside into the house and during the winter from the heat inside the house to outside. So it's really good to use those in windows that are south facing and they can be motorized. You can have top down where you can lower it from the top or you can raise it from the bottom. That gives you a, a lot of flexibility in how you can use it in each room. So those are great in bedrooms too that are south facing because it keeps that heat out, keeps the room cool. But in the morning, you kind of want to take it down from the top down, see what the weather is like outside. And also just you can still walk around and get light in your room, but you still have privacy because no one can see in because you can control the height of that top bar of your window treatment. So that's the best one for heat. Then there's also roller screens which help reduce heat and uh, give you UV protection. The honeycombs also give you UV protection for your furnishings, your floors. And, uh, but the screens, you can see through them a little bit more and they're a little bit more modern. Uh, the, uh, so it just depends on your style of which right. one's best for you. I love that. And there's many, many choices. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure we're, you're in the thousands. I mean, how many choices really oh, are there, there are, than window coverings? There are so many choices. There are so <laughs> many manufacturers. So it's you know good to work with someone that knows that. And we know all those different manufacturers and which type of systems work best and which motors are quieter than the other ones. So if that's a, an issue for you, then you know we can make those recommendations as well. 
Great. Okay, so for fun, okay. what window cover covers or coverings are trending? I, I mean, where are there certain colors that we're seeing in 2023? What is it looking like? Oh, there's bright colors. Bright oh. colors are what's coming in 2023. That's what a lot of the trends are. Doesn't mean that's what you have to do or what everybody does, but that does give you an idea of what's trending in um, the country. So bright colors and then for the the window treatments themselves, faux blinds are always the most popular, followed by honeycombs, and then the third are roller shades are the most popular. So those are kind of the, um, those have been the trends for probably about the last five to 10 years for what's most popular with shades, but bright colors. So if you like bright colors, this is your year. All right, yeah. I love that. Okay, so one of the things when you're redecorating your home, mm -hmm. I mean, window coverings can add value. I yes. mean, they really can. So, you know, my understanding is you always want to do your window coverings or window shades, curtains as the last step in the redecorating process. Is that correct? So, and not always. It depends yeah. on what you're going to do. So, if you're remodeling and you're taking it right down to the studs and you want to consider motorization, which will help with the resale because it will all be hardwired, you have to do that in the initial design oh. because those wires have to be run before the drywall is put up. So if you're going to do that, that's something you need to consider early on. But again, go back to that two for four, two to four percent. What's going to be the value of your home after the improvement, and figure that's how much you'll be spending on your house. I love that. Yeah. Okay, well, good. That is good. That is great information. Really good information. So custom home builders, right? When you're calling Shona, that's uh, for the motorization. Uh, that's the time to do it, right? Yes. So wonderful. All right. So what are a couple of tips or tricks that you can share with us, not only for the inside, but for the outside too, when it comes to window coverings or shades or, you know, is there really, yeah. you know, from stopping that sun from hitting you when you're outside enjoying the day? Right. Well, if you have a covered patio, outdoor roller shades are great and gaining a lot of popularity. So you can get them with tracks on them actually where you can bring it down and keep the bugs out. Ah, so yeah. when we're having that beautiful fall and spring weather, you can have those down, keep the bugs out. You can go out there, maybe have an outdoor TV, sit out there in the evening with a nice cool breeze and have the bugs out. You can keep the pets in and the children in and have a great time out on the patio. So that's one thing that's trending. Another little tip is, you know, if you're a new homeowner, you don't have to do the whole house all at once. Think about the rooms that you're gonna use the most and where you want to have just beautiful treatments and then spend your money on those and then you can always do the other rooms later. I get a lot of young couples who uh, you know, are buying a three or four bedroom house and they don't have kids yet because they're gonna have those in the future. I tell them, okay, well let's wait on the bedrooms unless you're gonna have a lot of guests or you're gonna be renting those rooms out. We don't have to do the bedrooms right now. Let's get your bedroom in the living room. So <laughs> That is great. Well, Shona, yeah. thank you for being with us today. And you, we have her information below. Please jot that down. Reach out to Shona. Have her come out. Have a, a you know, get some customized window covering. It's amazing. They're beautiful when it's all done. And we will be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Michelle Briggs, with Your Personal Real Estate. And we are continuing today our conversation with Cody Lehman. Now, he is the Chief Sales Officer with Max Protection. How are you doing today, Cody? I'm doing very well, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm glad you're here. So tell us about you and tell us about Max Protection. Well, I've, um, I've been in the security industry about just, just shy of 10 years. Um, and Max Protection is a, an authorized dealer of ADT. So we sell ADT products and services. Um, and, you know, definitely, I would say roughly 30, 35 years of security experience between the people who founded Max Protection. Um, you know, and our internal motto is people first. So, um, you know, the organization is focused specifically on the customer and the customer experience, which it feels kind of like the industry and, and really just the world in general is kind of getting away from that type of model. Um, and we're trying to keep everything that we do take into consideration all aspects um, and all people involved in the process. So from the, the representative to the customer, the technician, leadership, all, all, all things in, uh, involved in that. Well, Cody, I know you have an amazing team uh, and you have bilingual team members as well. Speak Spanish? Of course, absolutely. We've got uh, Mandarin, Spanish, and English, obviously. I love that, I love that. Well, I've met several of your team members. They have a great facility here in the Houston market. 
So thank you for being right around the corner for us and having an amazing team. Absolutely. So often, like I often I have customers that tell me that they've been approached by multiple vendors, including ADT, after they close or after they purchase their right. home. What recommendations do you have or would you have as far as you know, how do how do consumers or new buyers navigate all of those different vendors that are approaching them? Yeah, that's a fair question. I mean, if you've if you bought a home, you've come through that experience. Um, you know, from pest control to solar, you know, security, anything you would potentially want when you're when you're purchasing a home. So, you know, my best recommendation would be to just verify that that person is licensed to do what they're saying they're doing. That's usually found on a business card or a badge. Um, you know, typically they should have a you know a logo, but it's possible that they could be wearing a you know button up like I'm wearing. Um, but they should at least have some sort of identification with a license number that verifies that they are who they say they are. Past that, um, you know, I would say these are just normal people that are that are looking for you know uh, potential new customers, and obviously uh, new homeowners fit into the potential new customers of a lot of different industries. Exactly. Now we've, um, I mean, as a realtor being in this business. You know, I, it's amazing that I don't know how they obtain the information. Right. Um, I know I I reached out to you and I chose Max Protection for my clients because of where you are located, because right. you are a phone call away. And I know that if there's any challenges that my clients have, that you're a resource for us. Right. So, you know, I invite everyone watching today, when you're looking at security systems, you know, it may not be the lowest price that's the best deal. Right. I mean, really look at everything, know, know who you're working with, and, and allowing them, give, give you an know, opportunity to learn about who they are and really get to know them. So don't just go buy a right. website and get the best deal for you, right? You don't know who's installing that. So keep that, keep that in mind. So what, just talking about that, what are some do's and don'ts when it comes to buying a security system? What, what should the new buyer be looking for? What, sh what should they consider possibly not doing? You know, tell us a little bit about the do's and don'ts of security systems. I would say in general, you should just ask questions. Um, you know, questions should revolve around, you know, I've, everyone's gonna ask the question of how much it costs, but uh, what type of warranty am I getting? Are there stipulations that, co that revolve around that warranty? How long have you been in the industry in general? Um, you know, just what you'll find at Max Protection versus other companies is, um, you know, a lot of times you, you, you could be dealing with somebody that's very new to the industry, so they don't need to know that they're not designing the system properly or not bringing up products that you should be asking about um, versus the, the average tenure at max protection is uh, probably six or seven years as far as how long they've been in the industry. And that's, that is extremely valuable to, to a consumer, especially in the Houston area, um, that's 60, 70% of the houses in Houston have some components of an alarm system already there. Having someone that understands how to navigate, what do I have, does it work, is it compatible, should I even want to use it, um, that's extremely valuable in and of itself. So um, do's, ask questions. Uh, verify that they're actually um, you know, licensed and experienced to do what you're asking them to do. And then you know, I would say don't focus on price. ADT is not the most expensive. I'm not scared to have a conversation that revolves around price, but we're not the cheapest either. We don't want to be the cheapest. Um, you know, that, that's a, you know, a market that's specific to someone and it's not specific to us. So um, definitely ask questions, verify who you're talking to, um, but do not focus on price and definitely, um, um, you know, don't be scared to have a conversation, e even if they did approach you at your door. Now, within your systems at Max Protection, working with ADT, you can specialize it. So not everyone needs 10 cameras and, you know, 50 sensors or what, whatever. I'm throwing numbers out there. Yep. Um, you know, we, there's, it's not about the cost, but, I mean, are there upfront fees? I mean, is there something that they say, okay, well, I'm looking at a security system. I should budget X amount of dollars to get this started. I mean, are there upfront fees? Right. Well, one thing I will say is that, you know, in general, that's going to depend on the, each individual situation, each home, do you have existing equipment? So that can vary. But what I will say is that you're going to pay for it somewhere, right? Even if you're getting a system for free, as an example, um, typically it, it, they're going to be cutting a corner in some aspect. 
Um, you know, so again, that goes back to asking questions. You know, I've, I've walked into many scenarios where a customer thought they needed a sensor for every window and door in the house and they've been quoted accordingly. Um, in reality, they have a hardwired system that's already there. They just need somebody that's experienced enough to know that and understand what it's gonna take to take that over and have a technician that's trained to do exactly that. I can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. All the time. Oh I'm my looking God. Around. Okay. So, why should consumers use ADT versus any other provider? Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of reasons, uh, in my you know opinion. I, I've been in the industry long enough. I've seen and experienced most of the companies that you could choose in uh, in the Houston area, especially. Um, Seven million customers, 150 years in business. You know, one thing. I think you should ask yourself, and, and, and Google it, feel free, um, pun intended, but Google spent $600 million to become a partner of ADT. You should be asking yourself why that is. Why did State Farm recently choose to spend $1.2 billion with a B to become an ADT partner? It's the same reasons you should choose ADT as your vendor for security. Um, you, know, you can rely on, if I have an issue, it will be addressed and timely because they have to support seven million customers. That, that takes a lot of, of manpower and it takes a lot of experience to even be able to attempt to, to, to support that many customers. I love, well, you're, you're right, good point, I love that. <laughs> so tell me about some of the products that ADT installs and how they work. Um, well, I guess a popular product now is a doorbell camera. Everyone seems mm -hmm. to want and love the doorbell camera. Um, matter of fact, uh, there's, there's uh, one uh, here as well. Um, it, you know, doorbell camera is extremely convenient. Ring actually invented the, the doorbell camera and, and it was a phenomenal idea because it's definitely, it, every security company has run with it. Google has since perfected the doorbell camera. If you've had one, you know that notifications 40 throughout the day can be extremely frustrating and annoying. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if any of those are valuable to me at all. Um, so Google, as an example, has facial recognition, smart notifications, uh, onboard storage. Um, and starting with the facial recognition, instead of getting a notification that says Michelle's at my front door, or I'm sorry, that there was motion at my front door, it will say specifically that Michelle is at my front door. Um, instead of getting a notification every time a wasp flies in front of my camera, I'm going to not get a notification in that moment. So instead of 30 clips, 29 of which are meaningless, I get one clip of actually what happened and, um, and I know who it was before I've even viewed that clip. I did not know that, I didn't know that was there. I did not know that was there because I have a ring doorbell and just recently I put up, you know, some Easter decorations and I put, you know, eggs out for the neighborhood kiddos. Right. And it's cute seeing those videos. Now the kids found the, they found the eggs last night. So I got some really cute video of that. That's awesome. um, but I do, I, I like the fact that when someone's passing by and walking their dog that I'm not going to be notified, you know, by that because I right. do get the notifications quite a bit. So I agree with that. I'm going to definitely look into the other option. Yep. So Cody, how does everyone get a hold of you? Well, I would say, you know, the website, maxprotectionllc.com. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's a number on the screen. You can reach out there as well. And uh, customer service at Max Protection LLC. Um, you know, there is a, a form that you can fill out if you want to be reached out to about having a consultation. You know, and that's one thing that you don't, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to have an expert come out and evaluate what your specific situation is. Worst case, utilize that information to, to have other discussions. But just feel comfortable in the fact that you're, you're educated in those moments because you know exactly what you have and what you can and can't do with it. Well, I think that is a great idea. Thank you so much. And where's your office located? Uh, we are uh, in River Oaks. <laughs> I love it. It's a great location, great building, a great team. Yep. And you guys give Cody a call, give the team a call, customer service um, at Max Protection uh, for your install and inquiry. So thank you so much. And we'll be right back after these commercial breaks. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Michelle Briggs. I'm your host for Your Personal Real Estate, and we are continuing our conversation with the owner of iTrip Houston Central West, Yvonne Fadi. How are you doing, Yvonne? I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm so excited. We could, everyone that's watching, we could do a whole like show just on the services that she provides, investors, people that are looking to invest, that are wanting to do Airbnbs, vacation rentals. I'm telling you, this is the woman to know. 
So Yvonne, please tell us about you and tell us about iTrip. Sure, so my name is Yvonne Feedy. As you said, I am the owner of iTrip Houston, which is, um, we are a franchise system and we do property management for short-term rentals. So what that means is when you have a homeowner who has a short-term rental property that they're listing on Airbnb, Verbo, those types of sites, um, to get bookings from guests who are coming to town for vacation or business for you know a whole myriad of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, we offer full service management services so that the homeowner does not have to uh, be bothered with managing the, the property themselves. And we, we offer services that allow it to be a completely hands-off endeavor for the investor so that it can be a truly uh, passive source of income for them. So Ron, tell us, I mean, what got you started in this? What, why iTrip? Uh, well, my background is, is not in uh, vacation rentals. Um, I have a background in the military um, and also in uh, transportation. I did uh, about 11 years working as a consultant, working in public transportation, rails and rail and bus systems. But, um, you know, like a lot of people, I got sort of the entrepreneurial bug and um, I wanted to go out on my own and, and um, cultivate some more uh, autonomy in my life and, and financial uh, freedom and so I looked into different franchise opportunities and iTrip is the one that uh, that came to the top that was the most appealing for me. Well you your background is perfect for that I, I, I think so thank you for your service. Thank now you. what makes iTrip different from others? I mean how does it, how does it compare to the Airbnb or and VRBO that you had mentioned? Well, I mean, is there a comparison? Well, yes and no. Um, we get that question a lot. So you compete with Airbnb? And the answer is no, we don't compete with Airbnb because Airbnb is simply an, an online marketplace where you can list the property so that potential guests can find it and book it. But if you own a property, you can't go to Airbnb and ask them to manage it for you because they don't offer that service. So what iTrip offers is not only do we list the properties for you, but we do everything else associated with running it as a vacation rental. So um, we list the property on up to 85 different listing sites that we have partnerships with. Um, we handle all of the guest communications and guest relations, both before the guest is um, in the property and when they're staying in the property. We handle the cleaning of the property after every guest stay. We do inspections to see if anything has been broken, what needs to be fixed. Any maintenance issues that, that crop up, we um, are the ones who will coordinate with the proper co uh, contractor to come on to the property and, and handle that issue. Uh, we collect the booking revenue, we remit the taxes to all the taxing authorities. So like I said, it's, it's the whole nine yards, soup to nuts, it's full service management and um, it's much more than you know, just listing the property like, like Airbnb does for you. Well, definitely sounds like so much more. <laughs> definitely hands-on and having that freedom because there are investors that are out there that have those rental properties and have the short-term rentals and they, they just want to invest, right? And they're moving forward in building that portfolio. So having a partner like you, you manage all of that. That's what it sounds like. That, that's exactly right. Um, there are a lot of folks who own maybe a single property or two and they're able to do it themselves, but if you are a serious investor who wants to build a portfolio, eventually you're going to get to the point where you can't manage it all yourself. And so you need to bring on a professional property manager and that's what we can bring to the table. Great. So when an investor, an individual that is beginning to look for a rental property, you know, that short term rental, do they reach out to you at that time or when would be the ideal time within the purchasing of a short term rental property to build their portfolio? Like where do you come in or when do you come into that? That would be the perfect time. I can come in right at the beginning before they've even found a property. When they're looking at prospective properties that they're considering, um, if they provide me with the address, I'm able to um, produce a uh, pro forma, which will give them an idea of the type of short-term rental income that they might be able to expect from that particular property. And that pro forma is developed using um, historical occupancy data that we have access to for the, the given area where the property is as well as looking at the nightly rate that comparable properties in the area are, are able to, to charge guests as well. I, like, I'm so, <laughs> like, I love this. Okay, so when, because I know you work with realtors. I mean, you work with, you work with me. And when we're looking for investors in the tiny, I mean, even tiny home communities, I mean, if they're selling that individual tiny home, you can assist with that, even if it is a small community of five or six. Is, is that correct? I mean, you can, uh, 
uh, assist with that whole process as well? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Any sort of property that uh, an investor might want to purchase for the purpose of you know, putting on the short-term rental market, uh, we can assist with that. All right, so you provide estimates for revenues and cost mm -hmm. and recommended rental rates for short-term rentals. Right. So when you're gathering that information, you mentioned about a system that you have and historical uh, data. Mm -hmm. So how long does that information, how does it usually take for you to gather that to be able to provide that information to an individual? Um, I can do a pro forma in a day or two. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Well, I think that in itself. So once the vacation rental is purchased, once it's complete, what is the role of the services that you provide for the property? You've touched on many, right. but literally, what does it look like? The home is purchased, start from the beginning. What happens next? So the home is purchased and we have to get ready, get it ready to, to uh, have guests come in and stay in it and, and put the listing up on the different listing sites and, and go live. So um, if the homeowner has a, a clean slate, they don't have furniture or anything, um, we can start with a referral to someone who can help them get the property um, furnished the way that it needs to be. And when it comes to a short-term rental, obviously this is different from, from a long-term rental. If you signed a, a lease with a tenant, they're gonna have to bring their own furniture. But as a short-term rental, you're gonna have to furnish the place. Um, you're gonna want to have a certain level of decor because there's a lot of supply on the market now and, and the short-term rental guest has become a lot more discerning. They're looking for a certain type of place to stay in. So certainly you want it to look as nice as your competition. So we're gonna start with that. We're gonna start with furnishing the place. We're gonna get professional photography done um, using not only a real estate photographer, but a photographer who understands the nuances of short-term rental uh, real estate photography, which is a little different. Um, it's not just photographing the space, but it's also highlighting, you know, you might pull out the drawers in the kitchen and to, to show, you know, how well appointed the kitchen is. And you might take specific photographs of, of amenities that are in the home, the, you know, the lawn games that you have in the backyard, the, the sorts of things that a short-term rental guest is going to want to see and is going to be able to uh, help them picture themselves in the home and, and want to rent it when they see the listing. So that's where we'll start and we'll also do things like install a digital lock on the front door which allows us to be able to do um, automatically change the, the door code every time a booking happens uh, for security purposes, those, those sorts of things to get the property ready to be uh, a short-term rental. Well, Yvonne, I know that in your Central West, now what area, what region are you and I know that there are other I, I trip franchises, right? There's other right. opportunities or you know out that are out in our area. Mm -hmm. How do you work with them? And can you share a little bit of what your region is? Right. So I trip, like I said, is a franchise system. So each franchise owner, uh, such as myself, purchases a specific territory. So my specific territory generally is within the loop of Houston. So I'm very centralized um, in Houston. But we do also have a, an I trip owner who owns the territory up in the Woodlands Conroe area, and we have another um, iTrip owner down in Galveston. So, you know, when opportunities come across my desk for a property that is in one of those other areas, you know, I'm very happy to pass that referral on to my, my iTrip colleagues in those areas, and they do the same for me when, when they get referrals for a property in my area. That's wonderful. So are you, I mean, are, are you at 100% capacity? Are you booked up? I mean, are, are we seeing, how much is iTrip being utilized inside the loop for the for short-term rentals? Well, um, I'll be honest with you, the short-term rental market is, I won't say it's experiencing a downturn, it's experiencing a normalization mm -hmm. after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we were at a certain level prior to COVID and then COVID happened and at first everything shut down. But that only took a few months and then the short-term rental market absolutely exploded because people didn't want to stay in hotels anymore, but they still wanted to travel and they still wanted to have the, the safety of having their own space. So we're coming down a bit from that high right now, um, but like I said, it's just a, a normalization to back to where we were uh, pre-COVID. But there are a lot of uh, short-term rentals in, in Houston, um, it's definitely a booming market, you know, people were coming to town for the Final Four that we just had. Um, right. We're not what you would consider a true vacation market, you know, nobody's really booking their dream vacation to Houston, Texas. <laughs> but um, there's lots of people coming here for, you know, special events like the Final Four, for business purposes, conferences, medical needs. 
Um, a lot of folks are coming because unfortunately they need to, to be in town for an extended period of time for, uh, for medical treatment. So there's certainly a lot of uh, reasons to, to come to Houston and book a short-term rental. Well, I know that I, I met someone recently um, over at 411 Grill, we were watching a game, and she literally, that was her intent. She is going throughout all the Houston market looking at short-term rentals to determine where she wants to move. So even if it is simple as that, you know, right. my trip, right? That exactly. is exactly Excellent. Well, thank you for being here today. And how does everyone get a hold of you? Um, the best way is to uh, give me a call at 713-996-9060 or um, website is itrip.net slash hcw or uh, you can email me at yvonne.feedee, F-E-D-E-E, -E, at itrip.net. Thank you for so much for being here today. Again, we can talk about this forever. You guys, we will be right back after this commercial break. Well, everyone, we want to thank all of our guests today. Liz Perez with CMG Home Loans, Shona Bascone, Gotcha Covered Galleria, Cody Lehman with Max Protection and Yvonne Ledee, the owner of iTrip Houston Central West. Thank you for joining us today and join us next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. We want to be your guide to the real estate market. If you're looking to sell your house or buy a home, I invite you to allow me to be of service to you and your family. I'm Michelle Briggs and this is your personal real estate. This has been a Now Media Television feature presentation. All rights reserved.